Welcome back to Ginger Kid Outdoors. Today, I got out the Garmin Zero. I'm gonna do some testing between the SIG MCXLT and the Geisley Super Duty Heavy Barrel. Both have 16 inch barrels, both have a one and seven twist. Both will be firing 77 grain AAC OTM and we'll see what we get for velocity. Also, I'm curious to see if the Garmin Zero will work off the ground or if you need it in a more elevated position. Oh, that's interesting. That's saying I've got a nine shot string. I thought I had 10 rounds loaded up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did not. So, bear with me. Okay. That's 10 rounds of AAC out of a, well, AAC 77 grain OTM rounds out of the SIG MCX Spear LT. Next up, I'm gonna put the bipod on the uh, Geisley Super Duty Heavy Barrel. Okay, I got 10 rounds loaded up of the 77 OTM by AAC in the 16 inch one and seven twist Geisley Super Duty Heavy Barrel. Gonna go ahead, take some shooting at 200 yards and see what kind of velocity we get out of a impingement system over a piston. I'm assuming the extreme spread on the ammunition will negate any like difference there could be. Okay, I guess before I shoot, I have to load it. missed my last round okay I'm gonna load that over to the phone hopefully I'll have two 77 grains yep so it is interesting that is it the ammunition or is it the different gas systems because there is roughly about uh, 2637.5 for the average feet per second out of a gas gun and 2629 for the average feet per second out of a, uh, a piston. I kind of thought it would have been the other way around because I would have thought the, the piston would have been more efficient for a gas system, but I mean, it could be just an absolute fluke that there is a difference between the two of them, but I guess uh, as we do more testing, we find out. Okay, so that was one freshly painted eight inch steel target I was just shooting at. So it'll give you a good idea of where the impacts are. The uh, MCX Spear LT, that has got a one and a half to four Leopold uh, Freedom on it and then the Geisley Super Duty H-Bar has a 1 to 8 Arkin. 
So I'd have to say I'm still probably not totally sighted in with either one of the two optics, but 20 rounds and I only had one miss and unfortunately it was with the uh, the higher magnification. I guess uh, when you got it turned down, you're a little bit more like particular about what shots you're gonna take. So lower magnification doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have less capability of hitting a target. Why, hi. You just caught me finishing up a little bit of uh, touch-up on some of my steel targets. I've been using a Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one. Um, I do prefer the color red over everything so that way it's easier to see. Just make sure that when you are out spray painting anything like this out in the woods, you have on something that you don't mind if it gets a little bit of paint on it because you will run the risk of having some overspray. So definitely when you're out in the field touching up your targets, make sure you're always uh, wearing something that is definitely going to be able to keep you uh, clean when you're out. That's why I chose to wear my Farmer Range shiny white retro, which as you can see now, isn't that white anymore. Well, this is pretty much gonna conclude it for today's video. I had out the MCX Spear LT. Again, this is a one to four Leopold Freedom fire dot. It's got a circle with a, I believe it's five MOA increments coming down for a total of 40 MOA of drop at four power. Again, if I don't fumble it, we were shooting AAC 77 grain OTM rounds. And of course, this is the Geisley Super Duty that I have my ear pro wrapped around in. In case any of you wonder, I run uh, Impact Hearing Protection from Howard Lay, their electronic uh, muffs. I was running a 20 round PMAG today. Again, this is a one to eight arc and I had it at six power. Any of these high magnification like LPVOs, I guess eight, you don't really call it a high magnification, but you're actually better off running them on the next size underneath at like six X because you get a little bit more distortion out of the optic when you're running it at its max magnification. And that can actually be pretty true with all firearms. Firearms, <laughs> all optics I should say. My bipod I'm running on this is a UTG Recon. Now what it has is, loosen it up here, it's got the ability to pan left and right and then it also can pan forward and backwards. So it'll give you a little bit different uh, purchase on different kinds of terrain that you might be using. I started using this a little while back as a little bit cheaper option from what I usually run with my Harris bipods because I do have quite a few Harris bipods, but I run just these in a cheap Picatinny format. So that way it's just an easier on off scenario here. And then of course, I am make sure that I put all my little rail covers back on my Picatinny rails if I'm not running any bipods on them. So. So this is the, uh, the Geisley Super Duty, as I mentioned. The only alteration I made is, of course, the Radian 45 degree selector and the Magpul Myad grip. I am a huge fan of the Myad. Otherwise, I've gone over this rifle in other videos. So with those being out of the way, got a 10 round Magpul uh, P-Mag I never used. My phone, Garmin Zero, I just dumped over in the dirt. But uh, this is the Garmin Zero. This is the Pro model, which I don't know if they had any other ones out before this. I mean, it's the only chronograph that uh, they've made that I've found so far. And then I got a couple of different sized bags. I've got a larger bag and of course, a little bit smaller bag, depends on what I'm gonna be needing for any kind of shooting off the ground. And then uh, this is my shiny yellow 
Retro, which you can see is now covered in red paint because the little bit previous uh, video you just saw of me spray painting, the uh, coat was still wet when I had it on the uh, mannequin that I've used in other videos. And I was wearing this when I was trying to pick that up to figure, well, this one has been stained as well with color migration off of this material in the hood. If that comes in contact with anything with some of the, some of them will still have a little bit of dye in them and they will stain. Otherwise, it's kind of like a 50-50 whether or not it's going to stain anything. But, I mean, paint will definitely make a mess out of your coat. But, as I mentioned, I've used this quite a bit for a lot of other videos that uh, I've had out there shooting slime and uh, milk jugs of colored water and that kind of stuff. So, I figured at some point it was going to get stained with different colors. So, now it most definitely is. So, I kind of want to go forward and shoot some more like maybe even like some spray cans of uh, paint just to see what kind of a mess that will make. But uh, that'll be going forward with uh, future videos, probably getting out more of the MCX Beer LT here and the Geisley, so. But yeah, as for the, the overall video, I was a little surprised to see that there is not quite a 10 feet per second difference in the overall uh, averages for these two rifles using the exact same ammunition considering they're both a one and seven twist, both 16 inches, both cold hammer forged. So unless there is something different between a Geisley barrel, which makes it shoot just a little bit faster than what the SIG barrel does, or if it is the, the system going from a piston operated over to a impingement system, or if it just happened to be how the ammunition shook out by AAC. I mean, it's, I was showing in a previous video shooting the Mark 12, we had a 254 feet per second variation on the first five rounds I shot out of that with the 75 grain hollow points from AAC. So there's been a lot of people complaining about this 77 grain shooting between 24, 2500 feet per second. I mean, today we saw 26 to 27. They do advertise it as 27, so. I guess to take all that into consideration when you're purchasing ammo, next I want to try to get into some of the Freedom ammunition and start shooting some of that and seeing how that does for what its uh, deviation is going to be and what its maximum spread will be. So hopefully in the future I can start purchasing some of that ammunition and for the most part I will still be using like a lot of AAC. I mean right now I just can't beat the price of it. So until it has like massive like recoil issues or I mean, I haven't had any issues with it as far as malfunctions are concerned. So that is one thing to take into consideration when you're buying. Um, obviously, you don't want your ammunition to cause malfunctions. But so far, we haven't gotten any rain today, but it does look like there is some on the horizon and on the radar coming this way. So I think that's a good time to wrap this video up so I don't have to worry about trying to oil up uh, rifles again.